think that works? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Cool, technical glitch, sorted. Welcome one, welcome all to the next Campus Jobs podcast. Ooh. Oh my god, that was so enthusiastic, thank you. You're welcome. Um, I did not expect that to be uh, First and foremost, <laughs> you've like thrown me for a loop. First and foremost, I hope you all had a lovely break away from the university, I know that I did, and are re-energised for the new term. Hell yes. Yeah. Um, okay, so you might notice that I'm here with somebody else today, because I always am, and um, today it's my friend and campus jobs colleague Chris. Hi guys. Yes. Um, Chris is currently studying a PhD at the university in, wait for it, management, marketing and reputation. That is such a mouthful. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wait until you have it written on your like, do you get a degree thing? Like yeah, a, yeah. doctorate. Oh my God. Um, <laughs> having completed both an undergraduate and master's degree before starting his PhD, I thought Chris would be the perfect person to give us some advice and perhaps like mention a few of your experiences that you've had um, on how to make the most out of your time at university as he doesn't seem to want to leave. I literally cannot get out of university. <laughs> oh my God. I love it. <laughs> maybe, maybe it's like when you leave uni, that's when you miss it because at the moment, yeah, being, you totally like, do. seeing like the light at the end of the tunnel, yeah, I'm like, yeah, ooh, yeah. but maybe once I'm past that light, I'll be like, no. Definitely. No, as soon as you're looking forward to graduating, yeah. as soon as you graduate, and you go to the real world, you'll definitely want to come back. <laughs> right, okay. Well, because um, what most of you might not know about Chris is that he is currently on a career break from working at British Airways. Yeah, that's right. It's exciting. When I left, yeah, when I left university, I was on the HSBC graduate scheme. Oh I was on that for seven years. That's a long time. Yeah, then I got my job at BA. Does the whole grad scheme last seven years? No, or? it lasts two years. Right. Yeah, which is really cool because I used to work in the branch. I used to work in all the head office departments. So yeah. That was really cool. Nice. Um, then I got a job as in-flight customer experience manager at British Airways. Represent. Yeah, so I'm representing <laughs> the flag, flying the flag for Britain. <laughs> um, and now I'm just doing a three-year career break mm -hmm. because... Um, I got a scholarship to go to Henley, which I'm Perfect. really thankful for, and I was really lucky to get. So, so what yeah. what motivated you? Having like like you said, going into the real world and like experiencing yeah. adult life, like what think, ma motivated you yeah, to come back? I think once study? you started your career, it makes you see sort of academia in a different light, oh. and you you start thinking, oh well, yeah, I can actually implement what I've learned at university, yeah. and then I think you're sort of. I've come back to Do you Bella. find that it actually, it relates to then what you've yeah, gone and working? Because sometimes the things that I'm learning, I'm like, am I ever going to know, like, will I ever need to know Some of the, the things, future? yeah, you'll never use again, but a lot of the <laughs> like things. Like Pythagoras' theorem, thank you very much, just <laughs> yeah. put it out there. <laughs> or for me, the entirety of, like, economics. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, a lot of the things that you do learn at uni, you can implement it in the workplace. And by coming back and doing a PhD, yeah. I feel like... I'm just consolidating all my knowledge. So, do you think yeah. that because you've uh, gone and come back, that you are more motivated than a person who probably stayed in academia? Yeah, and definitely. Hasn't gone and... Yeah, yeah, because any sort of personal development is a gift, and to have time to be able to do that is amazing. Yeah. And when you're in industry, everything is very fast paced and very results driven. Yeah. So to actually take another three years out for your own personal development, I think is an amazing opportunities so, yeah um so as i mentioned before we work together at the one and only campus yeah, jobs uh here to provide students on campus with flexible part-time yeah, work come and see us shameless plug we will be at the help desk <laughs> monday to friday um so have you whilst you did your undergraduate and your master's yeah and maybe even now as a phd you've got a part-time job have you had any other part-time jobs yeah i you? have had some part-time jobs actually tell when us was, about them when i was an undergraduate i used to work at the gym so selling gym oh, yeah. memberships. Yeah. <laughs> Did you get a lot of people in January being all like, yeah, so January mean? was actually the really sort of busiest period. Okay. So you, you used to get a lot of people, but then not a lot of retention and a lot of no, drop outs. No. So. I've got a, well, my actually, <laughs> my new year's resolution this year is to yeah, cancel yeah. my gym membership because I am not going. Oh, but there's nothing more important than your health. <laughs> <laughs> that does, I mean, to be fair, I do, you know how like they say that you should walk an average of 10,000 steps a day. Yeah, I yeah. do that because being on campus, you do tend to like walk 
go but what about your heart and your lungs and your <laughs> oh don't make me right? feel bad I'm literally like this needs to happen because I'm not going and they're taking money off yeah, me and yeah. my mum's like what are you spending your money on the, I'm like the gym <laughs> but do you think that's the right thing to do <laughs> do you think you, are you going to motivate me to go to the gym <laughs> totally like I think you need you, everyone needs to go to the gym there's nothing more important than your health is there. okay <laughs> just to segue back into your part time yeah, job yeah just to go back into that job <laughs> so that I don't feel like I'm becoming a couch potato <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I had another job as well, working as a debt collector. Oh no! Yeah, so I used as an to undergraduate. work. Yeah, so I used to work in a call center, <laughs> and the computer—you didn't even have to press anything. The computer used to just ring up people that hadn't rung, paid their no. debts, and you used to have to be like really firm and assertive and tell them that they have to pay their debts. <laughs> and you can only imagine what they used oh, to say. Oh yeah, I bet it was so like. Yeah, and I worked there for about a week, and it just did not work out. Okay, so that one was <laughs> short-lived. Yeah, it was a short temp. It was a temping position, but yeah. You, I reckon you've got to have a really strong character to do that kind. Of, not that you don't have a strong. Character. <laughs> but I feel like yeah. if I tried to do that yeah, job, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. no. Yeah, it was. Um, it yeah, it was very out. interesting, but it didn't. D- d- it does make you learn about how like what happens if you don't pay debts and stuff <laughs> yeah oh my god so in your part-time jobs you know how to take care yeah, of yourself i can sell gym memberships exactly i can debt yeah. collect and now i can help desk operate yeah you can do like right to work checks <laughs> yeah and all that. exactly so with the other two part-time jobs that you had were they campus jobs like not as in campus jobs from so, our students or were when, they when i was not undergraduate i didn't really understand the whole campus jobs um, sort of service that was offered yeah. to me so I just thought you had to just go and get, go a, job and get a job and, anyway. yeah. Yeah. so that's what I did and looking back I don't know why I didn't use the campus job service because we've got so many available so many really cool jobs on campus it's, for me it's not even the type of jobs that they offer because even though like they are um, one of the jobs that I did previously in one of the years was like really catered towards my degree and what yeah, I wanted yeah, to yeah. do in the future so that was really helpful but the main aspect for me is how flexible they are because Definitely. I have a lot of demands on my time yeah, you've yeah, got yeah. a lot of de- you go into the gym you know yeah. you've got a lot of demands totally. on your time so it's just the flexibility so I was wondering yeah. if these jobs that you had before if they like catered for that or definitely not oh. and when you're working in another organization they're going to put the needs of that organization first yeah not your personal needs so at least by working through university they're sympathetic to the fact that your education is number yeah. one exactly. and that you're also under a lot of pressure to get in deadlines exactly. and exams and stuff and i feel yeah looking back at it i would definitely do a campus job instead of these sort of random jobs okay so um thanks for that um i found a statistic that said in two it was from an article written by the guardian but it said in 2017 official government figures um revealed that actually 49 percent of those in england are expected to have entered advanced studies by the age of 30 which i find quite impressive that's like half of half of the population in England, yeah, not yeah. including Wales. <laughs> As a Welsh person, I could say this statistic does not include Wales. Um, so do you think, as more and more people are getting university degrees, what is one thing that you think people don't take advantage of whilst being at university? Because I've, you've been yeah, here for a long time. I've, Yeah, this is my third uni. So I would say take advantage of the whole support network that's available. So you've got the study advice service, so they can help you with your academic skills. And you've also got the careers um, service on the first floor in Carrington. Yeah, love them. And they can help you start building your personal brand. So when you do go into um, looking for a job, you've got your LinkedIn set up, you've got feedback on your CV. I actually didn't understand the importance of LinkedIn in like Personal the professional world. Exactly. Important. And the amount of people that have it and it's a great way to network and make connections. Yeah, and I just yeah. like, before this year, my LinkedIn was horrible. Yeah. I would not, looking at my LinkedIn, I would not hire myself, Definitely. but I was like, I need to improve this. And also like make it easier for yourself because if you apply for a job and for example, it requires a LinkedIn profile, mm. it's going to take you hours. Have you had that before? Yeah, yeah, loads of jobs you apply for and oh. they, they check your LinkedIn. Yeah, sometimes you just apply via LinkedIn and it's not actually a separate recruitment process. I didn't know that. Yeah, so what I would recommend you do, start p- building your personal brand now mm. and put all your information onto your LinkedIn because when you come to apply for a job and it's mandatory that you have a LinkedIn, yeah. it's going to take you hours, if not days, <laughs> weeks. Be like, oh yeah, I had this experience two years ago. Oh, yeah, <laughs> Try to remember what you did in the past yeah and then you need to put 
put the dates in and then you need yeah. to remember what your job role was and all of this but so the start, earlier you get it done and start doing yeah, it yeah so the start doing it early and then keep updating it as you've got new experiences put it on there that's a good because idea because you can tell which linkedin's people have been updating and contributing to not mine and which have been like locked up in five minutes yeah so i definitely would say start building your personal brand now and get as much feedback you can, as you can as well because I'm sure we've all been in a situation where we what we think looks great, someone else will look at it and be like, oh yeah, well you could develop this, you could do this yeah. better. So use the career service, um, use all the available networks available to you. Good advice. You're welcome. Um, <laughs> which actually leads into my next question because I was gonna ask you, before you started university, what is some advice that you wish someone had said to you or what would you give to someone else? Um, just it can be about anything but yeah, what would yeah. you what would you say to impart your wisdom so I would say um, being at university um, a lot of people worry about uh, am I going to pass my degree what classification am I going to get oh so they're am worrying I... about the end goal yeah really. so worrying about the end goal so what I would recommend um, people do and this is something that someone taught to me when I was worrying about my degree yeah just get a bit of paper write on there all your units all your pieces of coursework yeah when they're due put them what, in, so like all your deadlines yeah, just everything. all of your deadlines everything that you've got to submit to pass your degree um put it into sort of chronological order right. and just literally just chip away at it start at the top just mark so consider what, everything yeah. as an individual piece uh, yeah. that makes the so puzzle. instead of seeing the it as, of your yeah degree. so instead of seeing it as one massive problem mm. just break it down into tiny little what the assessments are chip away at them start them early and just tick them off so the key to making the most out of your time at university organization organization or, organization yeah organization prioritization yeah. i have to say though i would not manage to like be like to do anything or to remember anything because i have the brain of a sieve yeah, yeah, without yeah. my diary wait Definitely. like i'm not a diary where i'm like do you yeah, yeah, yeah. today i ate some crisps i mean because like, <laughs> i eat crisps a lot but um it's like the kind of diary that's like yeah that's like right this is due today i've got to be in work at this time like got Literally. a society meeting at this time it's so helpful yeah just make a list and then just mark it mark it off because it's so satisfying when you're just chipping away at it yeah and you have only got a few assessments left do you know what one of my friends did and i actually asked him to send me like a blank copy so i could use it as well yeah, but yeah. he created a degree calculator yeah, so based on his different well. modules and how everything was weighted mm -hmm. throughout the year he could put them in and then he could see what he what he'd got and like what he in based on like what his aspirations were yeah, what he yeah, needed yeah. to get in order to achieve his like Definitely. what he wanted at the end um so some universities actually have a thing online i'm not sure if they have it here where you yeah. can actually put in all your marks and find out what your classification is oh. and you can also work out what you need to achieve on your assessment to get the classification that you want God. so you can actually sit down and work all that stuff out and if I were you, I would sit and work it all out so you're not worrying and you don't have any surprises. I have a question for you. Yeah. Out of undergraduate, masters, and PhD, what one was the funnest to like to do? Undergraduate, for really? sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I guess I think the longer that you're at you need a little bit more serious it gets. And right. Bit, yeah, so um, undergraduate. As you mature, was, you probably take it yeah, more definitely. seriously. Definitely. So I had the time of my life as an undergraduate. <laughs> so I would, yeah, just take. Just take advantage of this time and have an amazing time, but also just have in the back of your head what you need to achieve to pass and get to where you want to be. Yeah, I think if I think if someone was going to give me advice or like advice that I would give to someone before coming to university on how to make the most out of your time, I would say don't just focus. Like you've said, be organised, which is a really big one. But yeah, I think yeah, yeah. as well, don't just like how you said about how people shouldn't think of the end goal. I'm thinking, yeah. don't just focus on your degree because there are other aspects like joining societies and having part-time jobs that help you build, like not only boost your CV but help you build as a person. Yeah, absolutely. So that would be my advice. I'd be like, take advantage of anything that comes your way because yeah. it will be valuable to and you. Put it on your LinkedIn as well. Exactly. <laughs> there you are, building your LinkedIn. Put yeah. it on. Yeah, it's all it about all personal links branding. Together. Definitely. Um, so, having studied at three different higher 
education institutions yeah, yeah, and yeah. you don't have to say obviously we know you go to Reading but you don't yeah. have to name them if you don't want to okay it's cool which one's your favourite <laughs> obviously Reading and <laughs> <Business> school <laughs> um, yeah it was, I've actually had three different um, experiences I was at Portsmouth for my undergrad okay. and that's a really modern university so everything's like brand spanking new and um, it's really good um, as it is at Reading <laughs> um, University of Sussex is in Brighton. So that so, was where you did your master's? Yes, yeah, so that's where I did my master's. Oh, I like Brighton. Yeah, so Brighton's amazing. The University it, of Sussex was in Brighton? Yeah, so you've got two universities in Brighton, University of Brighton right. and University of Sussex. Can I ask a really silly question? Because yeah. my geography is shocking mm. and I didn't pay attention in school. Is Brighton isn't in Sussex? Like, yeah, it, it is. Well, it's... It's I have no on idea. the boundary of East and West Sussex. Okay, okay. Yes, right in the <laughs> I've just made myself look like right in here. <laughs> no, not at all. So that uni is really cool because the campus is in the South Downs area of like outstanding beauty. So that's okay. really, really cool. And Reading is awesome, particularly the business school, in my opinion, because... Henley Business School has got a very like is, prestigious reputation. It's extremely prestigious. Yeah. You've got an amazing campus here in Reading, and then you've got the Greenlands campus as well, which used which to be pretty. the stately home of WH Smith. So, really? Yeah. So, um, and it's awesome there as well. It's so beautiful. I didn't know that. That's yeah. quite cool. Do they have that on a plaque somewhere? Like, no, W.H. So Smith my, lived my, here? My professor told me one day. Oh. So. Yeah, but I'd say all were amazing, but I'm what really was your thankful. What was your favourite part of each? Um, so, at Portsmouth, I'd say because it was a modern university, the nightlife is really good. And, um, yeah, it's really just like modern and techy yeah. and they really um, invest a lot of money into student experience. Oh. Whereas at Sussex, um, they are really high achieving there. Mm -hmm. So again, by getting a degree from Sussex, you know that it's going to be like a really solid like, oh, it's, yeah. accredited degree. Yeah. And um, again, the experience there was amazing. And, and what is the, your favourite thing about Reading? I think the favourite <laughs> thing about Reading is obviously the people that I'm here with. Yes! And i say... <laughs> Friends for life! <laughs> definitely. And I would say the business school, like how high quality and again high achieving the business school is. Mm -hmm. And you can you can be really proud to say that you've been to Reading and that you've oh, been to sure. any yeah. business school. So, yeah. I, I think if someone was to ask me what was my favourite part, like what's my favourite thing about Reading, yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't know Sushi how Mania. to... But you are. <laughs> Sushi Mania is my favourite thing about <laughs> Reading as well. <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I wouldn't, I wouldn't really know what to say. I don't know because I feel like it's all been, not there, there was obviously been times in my degree where I'm literally like, where it's all stressful and it's like, yeah, why am yeah, I here? Yeah. I don't know. You know, you just question everything. But you'll get but through that. Exactly. And the, and when I, the whole experience, if you were to like weigh it up, it's been so positive and I'm yeah, just, yeah, yeah. And I, but now I couldn't imagine going anywhere else. I know here at Reading, they really care about students as well. And they really care about feedback from students. Yeah. So. Um, yeah. I'd oh say, no, I lie. I know what my favourite thing about Reading is. What is it? Summer ball. Summer ball. <laughs> yeah. oh, I haven't been. I Have haven't... you not? Oh. oh my god! So they had Sigala last year, and then the first time I went, which was actually in my second yeah, year, because yeah, I was yeah. a fool and I didn't go and finish it. Yeah, it was Jack Jones. No way. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. I love him. <laughs> it's worth coming to Reading just for that. Yeah. And Reading Festival as well. True. I went to yeah. Reading Fest last Did year. You? Reading Fest? No, Reading, Reading Festival. Fest. <laughs> <laughs> Post Malone, hands yeah. down. Oh, I need to do all this. Yeah, you need to do it before you go, but you've That's got time. Right. Yeah, so we've got You're a year okay. and a half, so yeah. yeah. <laughs> <Can't wait. laughs> um, so having studied at like all your degrees. Yep. If you had to do them all over again. Yeah. What would you do differently? What would I do differently? And you could do it for the whole experience and you're in like would, academia or you can pinpoint each degree and say which <laughs> <laughs> what you would do it individually. Um, I would get more feedback on my work before right. I submitted it Ooh. because I got a first in my undergrad but that wasn't thanks to my academic ability. Yeah. It was thanks to other people helping me. And, and giving you feedback. Yeah, and giving me feedback and getting my work checked by lecturer before I put it in. Yeah. Or going to academic skills and getting it checked. 
or so not in, leaving it to the night before yeah, and doing it because all night. they won't and they they're not yeah that that does not go down well for them. <laughs> if i need feedback i need it in the next hour yeah, that's no. right <laughs> yeah so, they were like who do you think you are <laughs> yeah so get as much feedback and i would not rush to get stuff in i would do it a little bit earlier mm -hmm. and show it to my lecturer and say do you mind just checking this i really want to do well in this module yeah so anything and they're, you can and tell they're me, happy I'd to really help you as well yeah. as long as you do it at an appropriate time definitely and where where i didn't get um any feedback i'd be getting like 58 60 percent where i was had received feedback i get like 75 i even got 85 percent once so, oh my god yeah so just get as much feedback and just show that you're willing to listen but then to i feedback. guess if people if people take your amazing advice and yeah. like write down all all their modules that they have to do yeah, yeah, every yeah. bit of assessment you'll know when things are and you'll be able to plan properly definitely in order to get enough feedback that you need and do well yeah and i don't want to scare everyone but my friend got a 2-2 two, two, and she would have got a 2-1 one by one mark no yeah so just get as much feedback my, as you can one of my friends well told can. me that um like in her second year she got yeah. a two one yeah, and yeah. she could have got a first by like 0 0.3 percent yeah something. well i only got a first by like about two or three marks so yeah it so all counts. just get as much feedback feedback is a gift <laughs> feedback <laughs> feedback feedback <laughs> um so what we like to do because we are the campus shops podcast yeah, yeah. is give i ask every guest that i have on and i give them myself sometimes but their career tips okay. so on how our listeners can like improve any aspect of uh like applying for a job whilst they're in a job anything at all yeah yeah, yeah. but each career tip is different because it's based on whoever i'm interviewing's personal experience yeah, so yeah. my question for you chris is yeah. what is your career tip for our listeners um so my career tips would be one make sure your linkedin is sorted out like yeah. we said to get as much feedback on yep. applications feedback is key cover letters cvs everything, everything. But three, I would say when you're applying for a job, tailor your application to that job. Okay. Don't be tempted to apply for a hundred jobs. With the same yeah, with the same CV, with tell. the same cover letter, and they can tell if you don't if, you, if you've in. not put any effort in. Exactly. Knowledge is power. Um, make sure you know you're coming up with so many inspirational quotes definitely. I'm like we need to put them on like <laughs> cups and stuff you yeah, know to give out to people definitely so <laughs> knowledge is power feedback is key yeah, I feel like that would be one key. of your <laughs> knowledge is power LinkedIn is grand <laughs> yeah personal brand super important yeah but when you apply for jobs and you get an interview you cannot turn up without doing your research mm. you need to read the annual report of that company you need to know what their mission statement is what their objectives are yeah. what they're looking for and then you recruit so you can reel all that stuff off and show them that you are gonna you are the person that they want you, you are can, a valuable asset yeah to their and business. you can meet their needs so yeah that'd be Good my career advice tip. Um, so my career tip is to make the most I mean Chris has kind of already touched on it on what he said and given his personal experiences but my career tip would be to make the most I'm going to emphasize it and say make the most out of the career services available on campus but specifically from like your first year in university because I didn't do this and now being a third year I'm like oh you know got to apply for jobs got to, you know it's on my mind and I'm, I'm realizing how amazing the career services people and team are and i'm like i should have been listening to them in first year because they run like workshops for example there's a civil service fast uh like fast stream thing and That's they do cool. workshops that you can attend as a first year on how to like prepare your like application and, and things then you like can that. put that on your linkedin exactly <laughs> and um but an important thing to note as well is that as a reading alumni you get access to the career services up to 18 months after you graduate really which i think is really like I don't know, good point for the university. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. That's really good. <laughs> so if I'm afraid that is all for today. They won't get any more of your, your words of wisdom. <laughs> We've run out of time. No, thank you for having me. <laughs> uh, it's been a pleasure to have you on it's here, to be pleasure. fair. It's been great. I've enjoyed it. <laughs> um, but be sure to tune in to our next Campus Jobs podcast. So it'll follow on. So we basically talked about how to make the most out of your time at university. And the next podcast will follow on from that and focus on life after graduation. Sweet. Which does scare me. I'll probably be sweating the whole time. <laughs> You'll be fine. <laughs> um, and hopefully we will be featuring an original member of the campus jobs team Sweet. an og member amazing yeah so 
Stay tired. tuned in. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye.